All right, so we've got another uh, little bit of a topic dump video today because there really just isn't, well, there's probably something going on enough that I could talk about, but it's just been one of those weeks. So these are one of these stories I've kind of been keeping up with since it first got announced and there's a little bit of an update to it yesterday. So I figured good chance to talk about it. And another one is probably one that you've uh, seen from a couple uh, different places now, maybe, but I think it's funny. But uh, let's just start with the first one because I think it's, uh, I don't know, I like it more because it's just, it's sad funny and it really, so we're gonna be talking about the uh, the Moby situation. If you guys have not heard of the Moby situation, if you guys don't even know who Moby is, uh, Moby was a really big kind of like electronic artist, especially back in like the early 2000s, I seem to remember. That's when he kind of had the most significance now, I think, his most significance is the fact that like Eminem mentions him in a song. The Moby, you can get stumped by Obi. So that's his legacy, I feel like is way more linked to that. And, uh, but, but we found some new information because Moby just wrote a book. And um, the book makes him seem a lot more like fake Moby from How I Met Your Mother than, than what people probably imagine Moby to be like. If you guys watched that show, there was an entire episode where they thought they were hanging out with Moby, but it was this crazy guy. Well, Moby's starting to seem a lot more like this crazy guy. So Moby releases this book and uh, makes a bunch of comments about people that he dated and people that he'd been in relationships with. You know, that's pretty normal. You're writing yourself like an autobiography. It makes sense that you're gonna talk about the people that you've you know, allegedly been in relationships with. Except some of these people have now kind of slapped back on the claims a bit. And one of those is Natalie Portman. Now I know that we can never truly know celebrities, but Natalie Portman it has always come across to me as just this, this elegant celebrity, which I feel like has, you know, she was on an episode of Hot Ones and I had talked about that before because, you know, there was that really stupid article that said that Hot Ones was sexist and it was very stupid. And it's actually, I really like that video. So if you, I'll have it linked somewhere. But even in that, you know, she's eating hot wings and she still comes across as so elegant and put together. And you know, she's, she's, she's a Harvard graduate. She was going through like intense university while she was filming Star Wars movies and stuff like that. Um, she's been involved in a ton of s spectacular projects like Black Swan. It's, you know, she's, she's, I, I, I like Natalie Portman, you know, and she seems like someone, she's never really been in drama. She's always put together. I'm just, I'm saying, I know we don't ever really know anybody, but if I had to put my cards in a basket that said like, you know, is Natalie Portman a trustworthy source? I would say yes, that I think Natalie Portman is not someone to wrongfully get herself involved in drama or willfully get herself involved in drama. She seems like the type of person who would just try to avoid that. So Moby makes the claim that when she was 20, and we will come back to that age, that when she was 20, uh, they dated um, while she was at Harvard. And uh, you know, he specifically said, let me find, let me find the quotes here. He describes going to visit her at Harvard University, kissing under centuries old oak trees. And at midnight, she brought me to her dorm room and we laid down next to each other on her small bed. After she fell asleep, I carefully extracted myself from her arms and took a taxi back to my hotel. He says that he den then struggled with anxiety about their relationship. It wanted one thing, for me to be alone. He's talking about his anxiety. And I'm not gonna make fun of somebody for having anxiety or anything like that because I understand that's very debilitating. We're just going on what the remaining comments are and what her counter is. Nothing triggered my panic attacks more than getting close to a woman I cared about. And I totally believe that. I totally believe that he genuinely cared about her and probably had a lot of anxiety trying to get close to her. I'm not gonna try to counter that. So then later he writes, for a few weeks I had tried to be Natalie's boyfriend, but it hadn't worked out, writing that she called to tell him she had met someone else. And he described that as dating. Even though he openly says that, you know, that he had tried to be her boyfriend and it didn't work out, he's still maintaining that they dated. So even though he said he tried being her boyfriend and, you know, she said she was, she gave him the old, I met someone else, I'm dating someone else. Uh, he does still maintain in a couple places that they dated, and we'll get to that in a second, but her very initial reaction was this. I was surprised to hear that he characterized a very short time that I knew him as dating because my recollection is a much older man being creepy with me and I had just graduated high school. He said I was 20, I definitely wasn't. I was a teenager, I had just turned 18. There was no fact checking from him or his publisher. It almost feels deliberate. And then the article even goes on to say, the book has their first meeting dated as early September, 1999, which would have made Portman who was born in June 1981, 18. That he used this story to sell his book is very disturbing to me. It wasn't the case. 
There are many factual errors and inventions. I would have liked him or his publisher to reach out to fact check. Uh, she said that Moby had told her, let's be friends, and they had hung out a handful of times. So, you know, that that makes a little bit more sense to me. And honestly, that even aligns with what he was saying, that they hung out a handful of times. But like I said, he kind of doubled down and posted this on Instagram saying, uh, I recently read a gossip piece where Natalie Portman said that we'd never dated. This confused me as we did in fact date. And after briefly dating in 1999, we, we remained friends for years. I like Natalie and I respect her intelligence and activism, but to be honest, I can't figure out why she would actively misinterpret the truth about our, albeit brief, involvement. The story as laid out in my book, Then It Fell Apart, is accurate with lots of corroborating photo evidence, ETC. Thanks, Moby. Sorry, uh, just because you have photos of the two of you together does not mean that you dated. Like, not every single picture of a person that I've take, like, I've, every person that you take a picture with is not somebody you can be like, see, we got a picture together. We dated. Also, I'm not trying to look too much into that picture, but like, she looks really uncomfortable, but I get it. Uh, some people, I don't take good pictures, so I can, you know, it's fine. Maybe she's a bad picture. And then he added, P.S. I completely respect Natalie's possible regret in dating me. To be fair, I would probably regret dating me too but it doesn't alter the actual facts of our brief romantic history. Why would this be the hill you choose to die on? Like, somebody is literally saying the younger person in this, because at the time Moby would have been 34 years old and Natalie, Natalie Portman was 18 and he lied about saying she was 20. So already his factual and fact checking is out the window. Nobody at his publishing company did the remote amount of work to corroborate her age, the story, like they didn't even need to contact her to corroborate the age. Like, I get it, the older you get, you're like, oh, a couple years, that isn't a huge deal. But 18 to 20 is a pretty big difference in maturity, age level, and, and, a, and a lot of things. I get that 18 is legal. It's not like he was, you know, fishing after a minor. But yes, he, in his mind, was trying to elicit a sexual relationship with a teenager, somebody who just graduated high school, and she is maintaining that nothing happened. And like I said, while we don't know everything about everyone, Natalie Portman's behavior over years would lead me to believe her over Moby's interpretation of events and, you know, based just reading some of his statements. Um, the reason why this is kind of back up is because uh, he's obviously had a bad reaction to this. A lot of people are being like, dude, why would you post that picture? Why would you double down? Like, she said you made her uncomfortable and she's already saying that this whole thing is an uncomfortable situation. Why, why are you trying to double and triple down on it? Like, just leave it alone. But he has now since canceled his book tour. So the message on the website obviously doesn't specify that, it just says Moby, Moby is cancelling all upcoming public appearances for the foreseeable future. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. All tickets will be refunded at the point of purchase and Moby is happy to provide signed book plates to everyone who bought tickets to these events. That's kind of nice. But somebody should have done some fact checking on that damn book. Like every once in a while you read something and you're like, wow, an editor failed here. But usually it's fiction when it's a real situation with actual celebrities and you're making claims about the lives of other celebrities and not even just fact checking basic things like the person's age, you gotta do a little bit more than just delete the posts and be like, wow, I'm getting hated by the internet. And I'm not saying that any hate justified is justified towards him. Like don't attack the man, you know, it was, I, in my opinion, it was totally fine for people to be like, what are you doing? Why are you doubling down on this? Why did you think posting this picture was a good idea? Like, I don't consider that hate, I consider that valid criticism. But death threats and stuff like that, that's a no. But uh, since this has happened, the producer has publicly apologized to Natalie Portman, acknowledged that many of the criticisms towards uh, him were very valid, and then Moby has now said he's gonna take time away from the public eye, and but, uh, but wants to take the time to apologize one more time. So he says, I'm the one who released the book without showing it to the people I wrote about. Uh, the one who posted defensively and arrogantly, I'm the one who behaved inconsiderately and disrespectfully both in 2019 and in 1999. There's obviously no one else to blame but me. So he's finally now kind of accepting that there's probably some issues with the statements he made and that's good. I'm all for personal growth even if it's because like it took like literally thousands of people being like what are you doing boo boo? But yeah so that was that was piece of news number one probably went on on that a little bit too long but the next one's a little bit more calm. So influencers, Instagram influencer, YouTube influencers, internet influencers and personalities. I clearly know this well. I am obviously a massive influencer with a huge steak and in production like look at this amazing wrinkled merch because my cat slept on it but this story uh, a recent story popped up saying that the influencer bubble is breaking because a uh, Instagram influencer who has about 2.6 million followers uh, could not get that following to buy the minimum of 36 shirts for a production um, from whatever you know merch 
site she had gone to. That makes sense, you know, if you're, you're trying to make some kind of limited drop or something, you gotta meet a threshold where they'll actually print the clothing. She didn't meet the threshold. I sold more than 36 t-shirts. Sure, like five of these specific ones in, are to me in different colors and I got a couple for my parents and friends, but other actual people bought them too. It's fine, links down below, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, th them trying to use this as an example of the influencer bubble bursting is actually ridiculous. So for one, Instagram is notorious for bots because that's just kind of common nowadays. It's very easy to buy, for example, accounts that someone else builds up for you, then you buy it and you start building your own following off of it, or you just buy the bots yourself. But even if you do take into account that a lot of her followers are probably real, she does get a lot of likes. You can buy likes and you can make it so that the followers seem active. I'm sure a lot of them are fake or just kind of there for the, the situation or just kind of there to try to piggyback off. Like you'll see a lot of these posters, they'll post things then a lot of people underneath in the comment section be like, yo girl, check out my page. Uh, check out this product I'm promoting, stuff like that. But she was also open very bad about promoting the product. I guess people said she, she mentioned it like once or twice beforehand, uh, which is not a good way to obviously get your brand built, especially if you know you have to sell a minimum number. But, but you know, a lot of influencers could literally mention something once or just kind of like digitally tease something and then right, be, right when it drops, be like, hey, this is live right now, go get it. And people would flood to it. Like, like, like bands and, and artists with significantly less of a following than 2.6 million uh, could generate that traffic because those the, the fans they have are more loyal. Like not all fans are equal, not all fans have the same ability to spend money on things. Different types of influencers, I hate the word, are gonna generate different kind of income from different places. That just makes sense. So just to kind of clarify what she was saying. So first of all, a lot of the news articles were wrong about the general consensus anyways. To be fair, her post kind of made it rough. So the post that she made was, Hi, it breaks my heart to have to write this post. As y'all know, as y'all I know, I released my brand. I've poured my heart into this drop for my photo shoot. I flew out a photographer and a makeup artist, but unfortunately the company that I'm working with goes based on first drop sales in order for them to order and make my products, even to keep working with them. I've to sell at least 36 pieces. Knowing I've become super irrelevant, I already knew it was gonna be hard. So like right there, she's trying to like play on people's, you know, that's kind of a normal thing to do. Um, but I was getting such good feedback that people loved it and we're gonna buy it. Uh, no one has kept their words, so now the company won't be able to send out the orders to people who actually bought shit and it breaks my heart. So she's basically just trying to call out people who are like, yo, I love this, I'm a cop this right now, and then they didn't. I sent out PR packages to friends, but I didn't get any feedback from them, which I can understand, people are busy and I don't expect to be their number one priority. Aside from that, the people I thought who would support me really didn't, nor did they share any of my posts, all I asked for. Sounds bitchy, but like no shade to anyone, and I've supported everyone's music or whatever they've asked for my support on, and I couldn't even get it in return. Don't expect shit like that though, or get better friends. So yeah, that, that sucks, but that's definitely not an indication that the influencer market is collapsing. When you look at all the different types of influencers out there, they can make just as much money or even more money on certain promotions than traditional media celebrities and it costs less to, to, to market through them. So that is, that is just, again, I think that's mainstream media trying to like undercut the fact that like they're becoming less relevant. But anyways, just as a uh, quick update from yesterday, she did kind of update things. Uh, people made it sound like it was 36 of one product. To be fair, she made it sound like it was 36 of one product. She's now saying that it had to be 36 of each product. She had seven different products, so she had to sell 252 pieces for your first drop ever. To be fair, seven items in one drop might have been a bit much for someone who's never done a brand deal before. Usually people might start with like one hoodie or like a hoodie and a shirt or like one hoodie, one shirt, one long sleeve, something like that, or like a hat, just something basic, like one item from each style of clothing. And then you kind of see where you go from there because you'll also get different price brackets for each type and it gives people a few more options. But like seven different products when you haven't dropped anything before and it's dependent on orders was a lot. That was kind of dumb in my opinion to do that. But uh, she's also saying she's never bought followers within the four years she's been on social media. I will take her word for it right now. I, I have no reason to call this person out for lying, but it does seem, un it's just weird that somebody that would have that many followers wouldn't be able to drop a successful brand. But again, she is maintaining that she did not buy any of her followers. I'm just saying that it is very common on, on Instagram that there are a lot of bots there are a lot of fake followers. There's bots that'll follow you even if you didn't pay them to do that. They, they're just kind of there to gather analytics and they obviously will congregate to larger creators because they think that that's 
you know, obviously that's a good place for them to get kind of like market information and stuff like that. It's pretty common. Um, it does seem like a very high amount for it to be this much of a failure, but if she didn't do a good job marketing it, that's a lot of it's going to come back down to that too. But the gist of this story is, is that there is not an influencer bubble break happening. If anything, like influencers and stuff like that are doing better than ever. I think people are just getting really good at calling out the fake influencers or the people that are like manipulating you into thinking they have better lifestyles than they actual, actually do. I think that's getting a lot easier to pinpoint. And I think people are getting a little bit jaded on it. I think people are getting annoyed with the, uh, I'm gonna market how much better my life is than yours so that you'll give me money. Like it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's like, yeah, I think that more people are catching on that it's like, if I just like save my money, I can travel too. But that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Sorry, it was a little bit scattered. Um, this is like really strong coffee. So uh, thank you all so much for stopping by. Have a fantastic day. Uh, links for a bunch of other stuff are down below. Thank you to all my patrons. There are some like really amazing ones of you like Bobby B and Timmy who are at the, uh, the meme tier, which is basically, I send pictures of my cats and cat updates, but thank you all. And thank you to, you know, y'all are all generous and I love all of you just for stopping by. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.